Golden Fate Minds. I'm Micah Frankel and a head of Legacy Boxing Promotions. The legacy continues. I am joined by Daniel Gonzalez. Sir, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing well. Got to know from you. I'm curious. How's camp been? What's it been like? I know that you and the team have been uprooted in recent months from the facility that you guys call the gym. Jack Candelaria, the San Jose Boxing Center, going to be undergoing some major renovations. So what has that done to your preparation? Uh, honestly, it did um, bring forth some obstacles. And, but again, that's not anything that me and my team can't handle. So honestly, we've been just uh, pivoting and adjusting to locations and training. So I have been training uh, with Leroy um, Bazan. He, uh, he still um, does strength and conditioning and helps with um, Donald Sanchez as well. So I'm grateful to be working with him. Um, also, my coach and manager, Steve Garcia, has also been helping me and, and arranging me with other gyms. Um, thankfully, there's coaches in the Albuquerque area that are looking out for each other and, again, looking out for the fighters. So that's what's pretty good. We've been taking care of business, honestly. Camp's been the same, so there's not anything new that we've been um, that's been thrown our way. Again, uh, opponent changes have happened. Um, no gyms, but, again, it's just another obstacle that we're we're okay with taking on. As far as the uh, the opponents go, where are we at on the number? What I'm looking at right now is Daniel Gonzalez versus Gilbert Menza. Is that still where we're at? Um, right now, so far, I believe so. Um, we did have two opponents uh, lined up again, but just, that's the name of the game again. If everybody is agreement, everything has to fall in line when it comes to getting the fight, but we stay ready uh, depending on the opponents, whether they're high ranked opponents or again, just starting off, but we're not going to take them lightly. We're going to prepare just as hard. And again, just be ready for the fight. I know that in your last fight, it was the first fight for you coming off of a loss. You mm-hmm. get back in the ring, you pick up another W, you get back on that right path. What did that mean to you to have stumbled and then overcome that adversity? Um, it meant a lot, and uh, I'm still learning from from that loss as well. Again, that's something that you can't really just brush off pretty easy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hold that loss, and I'm gonna continue to roll with it um, and get improved with each and every fight, uh, every training camp. We're gonna add something new to it. Uh, like I said, that fight doesn't define me. That loss doesn't define my career at all. So it, it'll only make me better. It'll only make my team stronger. It'll only make my my love for the sport just as just as important. Again, this isn't this isn't the end of the road nor the beginning. So stay tuned for everybody because it's going to be a, an awesome show. So how do you stay committed and focused in camp? Well, all these changes are coming at you. This opponent, that opponent. You've had a few changes already. How do you stay focused in what this stuff's going on? Uh, Just, again, asking yourself why you really want to do this. Because more and more throughout camp uh, and the closer the fight gets, there's going to be obstacles. There's going to be problems. There's going to be circumstances that make you feel like, like, I don't know if this is going to be it again. But that's just the fighting game. Um, Usually when there's... When there's really good things happening. There's going to be, we got to just stay strong and stay committed to that, of course. So honestly, I'm happy that my wife and my kids have been as supportive of, as, supportive as they've been, just because the whole fighting life is harder than it seems, just because if everybody's not in sync with your schedule and your dreams and your hopes and even your emotions, it's, it could be hard because not fighting's not for everybody. So I'm I'm happy that my family and my team is helping me stay grounded. What do you feel you needed to do to adjust? What lesson was learned from the Rudy Montenegro fight that you've now been able to apply moving forward? Um, emotion um, and figuring out what type of fighter I want to be because that was the first time I actually let emotion take, take a hold of my fights. Uh, Getting, getting that whole 
getting the crowd riled up and get, getting the trash talk here and there. Like, honestly, that has never been me. That's never been the type of fighter I've always uh, I've always held myself with respect and I've always respected my opponents as well. So that time was it was more like a shock to me is one of those dogs barking across the, the fence type of thing. It, I, I got excited and I was like, I've never been through that. So shit, let's go. Let's talk. And but honestly, that made me really think about what kind of person I want to represent as myself, as a fighter. I mean, I want to show respect for the sport. I want to show respect for myself and my opponent. And usually when I do that, um, things usually work out the best. So in my opinion, I think I just need to have respect for the sport, myself and my opponent. And usually the rest will take care of itself. Is there now a different level of comfort to fighting here at home after having had that experience being on the other side and being the road fighter being the guy getting the booze? Oh, honestly, yeah, it did change my perspective on that. Honestly, I don't want to remain being a, um, like a local fighter. I do want to challenge myself and, and grow, grow and take these fights out of state and help represent New Mexico in a bigger and better way. So, again, it is awesome fighting in front of my hometown and home crowd, family and friends, but the goal is to actually take my hometown out of here and, and again represent like all the other great fighters from new mexico so i just want to you know i want to represent along with them not just here but along the whole united states that would be the goal maybe even the world can't dream too, too small so dko wins in your first three victories have you figured out who you want to be inside of those ropes, a power puncher, a technician. I know that there's a fight coming up, so we don't want to give away too much of the game plan. But have you found who you want to be and what style you feel like is going to best suit you in there? I think right now we're at a, a growing um, stage. So it's kind of like painting or just learning music. Again, we're learning on the job, but at the same time, still still improving step by step. Um I, I can change the type of fighter I want to be when it comes to the training camps. So we're, we're always improving and trying to change up the style. But honestly, uh, I just love being that type of Mexican fighter. That's the best I could put it. Cause you can get a hard hitting Mexican fighter. You can get a Mexican fighter that knows how to move stick and jab or just a hard puncher. So again, I just want to be, a proud Mexican fighter. And that could, that could be well-ranged. So again, it could be anything from a Canelo type of fighter or like, again, any Julio Cesar Chavez because Julio Cesar Chavez was more on the technique side. So I, I would love to be like right in the middle again, maybe in a couple of years, we could re re ask this question and see where we're at there. The win over Shadi was a victory over your most Experience opposition. The guys have, he had 14 professional fights heading into that one. Now you're on the totally opposite side of the spectrum, currently matched up with a guy that you'll have more experience than with Gilbert only having two fights. So you look at this one as one that I need to get a knockout. I need to get this guy out of there to show that I am superior than him and his skills. Uh, right now, I don't want to take him too lightly because on my second fight, again, I, I wasn't someone to take to be taken lightly. So um, between him and Shareb, I'm going to take them just as serious when it comes to opponents because everybody starts off somewhere. So for all I know, this guy's a killer and I could just prepare the best I can. And honestly, fighting some, fighting somebody that has a bigger record than me, it is a little... Um, like how should I say? it's it's not anything that I'm used to, just because I did start boxing a little later, so I have to play catch up a lot faster. So do twice as much, twice as fast when when I'm going against certain people that have been boxing for like since they're um, maybe like ten years old. Again, it's nothing new when it comes to fighting somebody with more or less experience. So it's just fun, fun, fun part of the game, just finding out where I'm at. Who you've been working with? I know that you were earlier at sparring. I know you're getting around town. What are some of the looks that you've been getting in preparation for this one? Oh, so this one we've been working um actually with Geraldo as well. He's fighting with Sigalas. He is actually gonna make his pro debut. Uh we've had a few matches here in amateurs here and there, so we're helping him prepare for his matchup. Um 
right now been working with Leroy and here and there I go and try to work with Donald Sanchez here and there but again that's only been a few times I'm lucky lucky to have them br bring me under their wing and show me uh, at least some advice that they've been through and everything like that um I am gonna go ahead and try to get some rounds in with Pitt before the camp ends up but again everything usually gets a little crazy with everybody's schedule so we're gonna try to get some more sparring in before the camp ends and we're gonna try to get at least some high level people we did go to pal um up in las cruces so we did get some work in with a couple of amateurs but they're gonna start to transition to be pros but again these are learning experiences where i need to start helping out people same way how they helped me out again pit and christian carball a lot of pro fighters have stepped out of their way to help me out so Again, it's a good little change of pace when I get to spar other people with different levels and skill sets. So that's always good, too. So like I said, we're, we're still trying to improve and get bigger names when it comes to sparring, but um, it's nothing new. Did I see you're so dedicated to helping guys get in work that when he couldn't make it to training, you, you took the myth, the glove, and went? the chronic kings and worked with jose villapondo did i see that on social <laughs> yeah no yeah and that's just pretty much uh i want to say thank you to jose and chronic kings because they've been a proud sponsor of mine since the beginning um honestly i just liked the way that he he just wanted to box but at the same time he needed to handle business so my pops and i decided to just go and help him out with some mitt work again we're not really here to try to like say anything but again it's just more helping out anybody who needs help that's something that donald has shown me and my team has shown me as well um to just basically be here to help the community there's no benefit in being selfish when it comes to those things boxing's already as selfish as it is so again we're just being able to help improve as much as we can to anybody well, be selfish for me real quick and tell everybody about your expectations and what they should expect to see on March 23rd. The legacy continues and you go for that fifth professional victory. Um, I just want to tell everybody to come out and enjoy the show and show respect to everybody and all the fighters, even if they're hometown or out of town. Uh, I want to give a shout out to all my sponsors. Uh, it's going to be a great show. So stay tuned. Um, just want to thank everybody. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Legacy. Uh, thank you, my team. Thank you, all my coaches. Uh, just stay tuned because it's going to be a good show. Thank you, Daniel Gonzalez.